These days, ad blockers are pretty common. They work by using filter lists to filter out domains or subdomains that serve ads. So when your browser tries nope. to resolve a domain that's known for serving ads, Adblocker will intercept this and just return a bunch of nothing. So the worst you'll get is an empty box reminding you of your adless browsing experience. Other heuristic approaches are used to block ads, such as blocking images based on their size. Common image sizes such as 728 by 90, 300 by 250, three th you get it. These image sizes are most of the time ads, so it's safe to block the lot of them. There's a constant battle going on between ad blockers and ad servers to gain the upper hand in the ad delivery war. Though the main perceived problem with ad blockers is that they'll only work on a single browser on a single device. If you want to block ads across your entire network, you're going to have to install an ad blocker on each browser on every single one of your devices. What if, what if you could employ a filter on your network to block ads? Instead of having to install an ad blocker on every browser on every machine you own, all devices connected to your network would resolve DNS queries through this filter, so all devices would be ad free. Let's have a look at just how this can be done right after this. Maltronics.com is where you can find the latest of hacker hardware, from Wi-Fi deauthors to Malduino keystroke injectors, Wi-Fi keyloggers, and USB protectors. It is run by myself, so do give it two minutes of your time. You're guaranteed to like our tech. Maltronics.com. Link is in the description. Enter Pihole. Pihole is a real clever piece of software that's lightweight and will run on pretty much anything you throw at it, assuming it's running one of the supported OSs. Though, as per its name, it was made with the intention of running on a Raspberry Pi, because anything else is a little overkill. Once set up, you can use your Pi hole as a DNS server. Much like Adblocker, it has a list of domains that serve ads. Quite a, quite a lot of them, in fact. When the page tries to load a resource that's on this list, Pi hole will simply tell it to GTFO. If you're wondering whether this will slow down your internet speeds, well, no, no it won't. Perhaps it's a bit misleading to call Pihole a filter, as no real network traffic is going through it. Only DNS queries will go to your Pi, which are just a few bytes long. Once your device knows what IP address it's meant to contact, it'll ignore your Pi altogether. To set up this contraption, you're going to need a Raspberry Pi and a 16GB microSD card, as well as some peripherals to set it up, of course, and a network to filter. Any Raspberry Pi should work fine, and you have the option of connecting your Raspberry Pi to your network via Ethernet or Wi-Fi. I'm going to use Ethernet for better latency. However, many people seem to have no issues using Wi-Fi, even on a Pi Zero W. So by using one of those, you could get your overall project cost down to a mere £10. Firstly, you'll need to download Raspbian, which is the OS that will run on your Pi. It's best to use the desktop version, as this just makes setup a hell of a lot easier. Next, plug in your microSD card of choice and flash the image file to it using Win32 Disk Imager. Links for both of these are in the description. You might want to grab a Mate, as this could take a little while depending on the size of SD card. Once done, unplug and shove it in your Pi and connect your peripherals as well as Ethernet. Setup honestly could not be easier. Just open a terminal window and type in the following command exactly as you see it on screen. The installer will warn you that it's about to transform your device into a network-wide ad blocker. Graciously accept this warning and keep tapping through the prompts. Make sure to select the correct interface, ETH0 for wide and WLAN0 for wireless. The upstream DNS is up to you, but Google, Google is the standard. Next, you get to choose the blocker list it'll use. I recommend just keeping this on default. Keep on tapping through, accepting the defaults as and when, and before long, it'll finish up providing you with its IP address and admin password. You might want to note these down or take a picture of them as they are quite important. But now the whole thing is set up and it doesn't need anything but power and network connection. So you can safely disconnect everything else. Now the IP address for the Pi needs to remain static, i.e. constant. If this changes, then it'll just create problems for us. So head on over to your router's control panel and make this change. All routers are slightly different and tend to have very unintuitive interfaces, so you have to figure this step out for yourself, I'm afraid. Now you're almost done. You just need to change the DNS server of your network to that of the Raspberry Pi. 
Now, unfortunately, my ISP doesn't allow me to do this with the router they provide. So I'll have to change the DNS server on each of my individual devices, though this is a one-time step, so it's really not a big deal. You might want to leave a backup DNS in case for whatever reason your Pi goes down. 8.8.8.8 is best as this is Google's public DNS. And, and now we're done. To test that everything is working correctly, go to your Pi's IP address and you should get this page. If you can also visit other sites and don't get any DNS resolution errors, then everything is set up correctly. I've got a few test sites here. And as you can see, Pi-hole does do a pretty decent job of blocking out all of those ads. There are a few annoyances, however, one being that it won't block many text ads, for example, those in Google search. And if you were to click one of those, well, you just get a DNS error, of course. Also, it won't block any YouTube ads, as YouTube generally uses its domains to both serve you the ad and the video itself. There is an apparent workaround to this, however, which I will link below. Also, remember that this is only a DNS sinkholer. It won't employ many of the heuristic approaches that ad blocker uses that I mentioned earlier, such as blocking certain image sizes. That's just simply out of the scope of Pi-hole. As for its admin panel, this can be reached by visiting its IP address forward slash admin. There's a few statistics that'll be visible to anyone who visits the page, but you'll get a wealth of info if you log in using the admin password you saw earlier. For the nerds, you can see a proportion of various query types, top permitted domains, clients, etc. In the top left, you can even see your Pi's operating temperature and memory usage. Very cool. You'll also get a log of every single query made, but for the security conscious, this can be disabled in those settings. If you have issues with Pi-hole blocking things it shouldn't, or not blocking things it should, you can make those changes in the whitelist and blacklist really quite easily. So will I continue using Pi-hole? Yes, yeah I will. It simply makes life easier not having to install an ad block on every single device, and also whitelist and blacklist changes are made instantaneously throughout my whole network. If I like a site and I don't mind running ads on it, then I can just add it to the whitelist and, and I'm done. And I would emphasize maintaining a whitelist. Ads can be annoying, that's, that's for sure. But remember, much of the time, your favorite sites are only able to exist because of ads. On YouTube, YouTube Premium is a great way to support creators and get a zero ad experience as a bonus. A portion of your YouTube Premium coins are distributed amongst the creators you watch. Alternatively, if you do want to help support this channel, check out Maltronics.com, where you can find a variety of pen testing and computer security hardware. If you have a mate that's interested in computer security, then why not send him the link? If you like this video, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you want to see more, and as always, stay tuned for more hacking videos. Have a good one.